Nice to see you. Good morning. So, do you think you're going to get back to Staten Island today? What's going on? <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope there's no issues at the Milwaukee airport. But look, we're all energized. We're excited. We are proud of our ticket, and we're ready to win in November. So, what did you think of uh, the acceptance speech? Uh, a, a lot of the criticism was that it went too long. Look, it was a it was a, a bit of a long speech, but here's a man who nearly died last week, and I think he is so um, appreciative. He has so much gratitude for being alive today, and also he has a long list of accomplishments, and that was what his speech really was about. What he was able to accomplish during his first four years, he has done so much more in four years than President Biden has done. In fact, President Biden has spent his time dismantling the good policies of President Trump. Remember, we had a secure border. We had low gas prices. We had a prosperous economy. He created so many jobs through his Tax Cut and Jobs Act. He lifted people out of poverty. He doubled the child tax credit. He was able to bring unemployment for minorities and women to record lows. That's the record of President Donald Trump. And in addition to that, we had peace through strength, no new wars added. We had the Abraham Accords, um, which was bringing prosperity to Israel. He had crippled Iran uh, uh, financially. So President Trump had a lot to talk about, and he wants to get us back on that path of success. Um, sadly, President Biden, on the other hand, has dismantled all those things, and America is less safe, less affordable, and our allies are not safe either. And, Congresswoman, it's, I don't remember a time where there's been such a difference in the way the parties are looking at the moment, where you're rallying behind the candidate at the RNC, and Democrats on the other side can't decide whether or not Biden should drop out of the race. Did you feel that there, that momentum, while you were there at the convention? Yeah, it was, it was electric. There was a lot of energy. People, I, I think what happened last Saturday with someone trying to take President Trump's life, it really um, brought this party together, but I think it also united Americans across this political spectrum behind President Trump and his agenda. Look what happened this week at this convention. You had African Americans, you had Hispanics, you had immigrants, you had a union leader all coming together saying that they previously voted for President Biden, but they are with President Trump today because he is the job creator. He's the one who's going to end mass illegal immigration, which is affecting New York City so much. Um, he is the one who's going to restore peace through strength. And so I think they have confidence now in him. And also they recognize that the things that the Democrats have been saying about President Trump for the last nine years have been, they've been lies. It's been vile rhetoric. And it's sad. They've done everything they can to try to stop this man professionally, personally, financially, uh, and hurt him uh, in, 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 in ways that have escalated to the point where someone wanted to assassinate him. They tried to kick him off the ballot. They tried to put him in jail. They did these sham impeachments. Then they went after him to politically persecute him in court. Uh, all of that stuff has built up to what happened last Saturday, where an assassin nearly killed him. And I think people are recognizing that's not where we want to go in this country, that we're going to unite behind a person who, who really loves America, who did so good to create jobs, to give people opportunity, to keep us safe. Uh, and that's where we want to go in, in America and, and in New York City. Still a lot of questions about that assassination, the shooter's own political affiliations. I want to also ask you about some news that we just got in this morning. Conviction of New Jersey native and Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkowick by a judge at a court in Russia. U.S. citizen sentenced in Russia to 16 years, more than a dozen years in prison. What do you make of that, and do you expect the possibility of a prisoner swap at this point? Well, you know, I don't. I, the thing is, with President Biden, he has made such bad deals, right? He gave billions of dollars to Iran to get back hostages. Uh, with President Trump, he was he was the art of the deal, right? He was able to negotiate much better terms. And I think the issue is with President Biden. The world sees weakness. They see that he's going to give you billions of dollars if you if you take somebody hostage. Um, so unfortunately, this is another example of weakness in our president, in our foreign policy. This president has had an appeasement of adversaries since the very beginning. Remember, rubber stamped the Nord Stream 2 pipeline for Russia while killing our own, which was important for 
domestic energy production. He went back to the Paris Accord without requiring that China and India operate at the same level fields. He lifted sanctions. He issued waivers on Iran, enriching them so then they can turn around and fund these terrorist organizations like Hamas, like Hezbollah, like the Houthis, and now our ally uh, Israel is at war. So there has just been a, one uh, appeasement after another from this administration, and that's going to put more Americans at risk. All right, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, thank you so much for talking to us from uh, Milwaukee. We hope your flight is not delayed yeah, or canceled. Uh, keep us uh, in the loop, but uh, thank you again for talking with us this morning. Good to be with you. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend.